It's been a while since I've talked about any of the timing related things on my YouTube channel and I figured I'd finally get around to something today. This is the Switchberry. It's a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 carrier board with a built-in PTP aware switch with Sync E support, all those kind of things. Those are things that I'm going to talk about more in a future video on the main channel, but uh, for today, I just thought I would put this together in this 3D printed case that uh, I had Jared C01, who's on the Voron team, he helped me design this thing. And this PCB was designed by a, a team of us um, on, at working with Time Appliances. It's an open source project to try to help timing scenarios and timing hardware get better. And uh, you'll see here, if you look closely, there's uh, Julian St. James, Ahmad Bayagawi, and Jeff Gearling. I do nothing with hardware. I give suggestions for things, that's about it, and say like, hey, it'd be nice to have this feature or that feature. Uh, and then I'm, I'm helping with some of the integration stuff on this. Someday, I hope that we can sell this thing. Right now, we're still kind of finalizing it. This is like revision six or seven, or I don't know how many revisions. One thing I've learned with all of my uh, conversations with anybody developing hardware is hardware, there's a reason it's called hardware and not soft. It is very hard to do. Uh, because when you have a little problem, like let's say one little IC here, or one little uh, passive component is missing, and you don't have traces for it, well, you need to redesign the whole board around that, uh, and re-spin it, and reprint it. Or a lot of times you'll see on development boards, there's little bodge wires and things. This one, I don't think, I think we got rid of all those bodges on this version. Uh, but anyway, at the heart of this board is this microchip switch chip, and the Raspberry Pi can manage the switch chip for, there's uh, five ports here. I think one port, I think this might be the Pi's port. I don't remember which port is uh, coming off the Raspberry Pi, but the other four are off the switch. And it's PTP timing aware, so you can send timing signals through this. You'll see that there's a slot for a GPS module here, uh, an OCP M.2 GPS module. So you can put one in there. This is for like uh, Wi-Fi 7 you could put in or something else on a little M.2 slot or you could adapt it out and put a GPU on it if you really wanted to do that. Uh, but the board has all these things in the back. These are for timing. There's uh, pulse in and pulse out for PPS from GPS and uh, for timing reference from the networking hardware too. You can, you can get that so you can validate that this board is actually giving the right timing signals. Anyway, that's enough about this. Uh, it's powered off a of Compute Module 4 and I think that we might be able to get a Compute Module 5 working on here too. And I'm just realizing that uh, here's another one of the fun integration things with hardware. This cutout, I believe, will work on here, but I'm not sure whether or not it would also work on the Compute Module 5. Uh, I will need to take this chip out for now. And this goes in something like that. And look at that. It, does, it looks like the cutouts work just great for the Compute Module 4. You could put a heatsink on here. Uh, for this testing, I'm not going to do that. But there's a couple other steps in here that we'll need to do to prep this for the board. And one is to put heat set inserts into this top cover. Heat sets are these little guys. They have little, little ribs on them, which, uh, can you focus? I can't focus that well. They have little ribs on them that kind of bite into the plastic. And for the top cover, I used ASA instead of... Uh, PLA, like this is. This is plastic that would deform a little more if it gets hot and cold a lot. Uh, but anyway, I used ASA, so it might need a little higher temperature on the soldering iron. But I also figured this was a perfect time to try out something I got at Open Sauce this year from CNC Kitchen. This is a, a little tip for the pine sole that I have here. Uh, it's a tip that has a, a threads on the end, so you can put these these tools to insert heated inserts a little more easily. You could just use this, like I could stick this in here and push down and it would transfer heat, but using a tool that's made for the purpose is always a little bit more optimal. So what I'm going to try to do is figure out which one of these it is. Looks like it'll be this one. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, definitely not that one, and probably not this one. Yeah, that doesn't feel right either. Find the right tip, and you screw it onto the end here, like that. 
And then I need to take this guy off. So I'll do that like so. And I'm just going to put this tip over here for now. And then put this tip in. And now I should be able to do heated inserts a little bit easier. I have this uh, silicone wire, which doesn't burn as easily as normal USB-C wires, but it's capable of 60 watts. And I'm using my Sabrent uh, multi-port USB-C charging station, which I've tested before works great for the pine sole. Uh, one thing is you don't want to just leave this sitting around. It's going to melt plastic and stuff. So I'm going to plug it in and I have my, I think it's out of frame over here, but I just have this, I don't know if this is from Heiko or somebody else, but it's just a little soldering iron station that fits this well enough. I did have to drill out, I drilled out one of these holes here so that I could fit, uh, fit these guys into there. It'd be nice if there was one of these that had like holes for all the tips so that you could store your spare tips more easily. But anyway, this thing is on. Let me get these heated inserts ready first before I heat it up. And these are, what size? M3 by 4 by 5. And I wrote on here M3 by 5, but how deep are they? I don't know. Uh, so always write all of, the, all of the information on your little baggies. And I'm going to get four of these out. Get them ready to go. And again, you don't need this nice specialized CNC kitchen set, but after doing enough heated inserts, it is nice to have a tool that's like made just for that instead of just using your soldering iron. But I'm going to heat this up now. So we're getting up there. And if you've never seen a pine sole before, these things are quite nice. Oh, it's uh, burning off a little bit of, I don't know what that is, but it's going right into the camera lens, a little bit of smoke there. But let's see if we can get these. Okay, it's going in. And just get it flush. Number two. You really can't see what I'm doing here. But uh, believe me, these are going in. I'll try to do one at an angle here so you can see. So you can see I just stick it on there. It heats up the insert. It pushes it down in there. I just want to get it flush and that's it. Okay, so you got those inserts in and I'm going to turn this off. I forget how you turn, like say, like standby mode. Okay, it does go down in temperature, and then I think that over time it just goes down more and more. I'm just going to unplug it and let it go. I, I always forget, that's the one thing that I don't like about this interface where there's two buttons. Like, if you wanted to stop heating, I guess you can just unplug it, but it seems like it would be nice just to hit like minus and tell it to stop heating for a while. Anyway, so that's the pine sole with that tip. I'll let that cool down. And while it's doing that, we have to figure this part out, I think. I think it goes in like this, straight in here like that, maybe, maybe not, no, it goes this way, that way, no, probably not that way, no, it definitely goes this way, but, But there needs to be spacers here. So that's what these that's what I need to get. So this, this build is a little bit complicated. One one of the tricks of hardware is trying to figure out exactly how you want things to go together because you can't just design a board and be done with it. You have to design it for assembly. So if you're gonna build a thousand of these, let's say, you want to make it so that you don't have many parts to put together. And in this case, we could have chosen like a snap fit case, but uh, the idea was we wanted this to be, let's see, so that goes in like that. We wanted it to be very secure and solid when it's put together. So if we did snap fit, you'd have, especially with 3D printed parts, you'd have it kind of flexing a little bit, and that's never a wonderful thing. 
so we have screws, but with screws you have to have the right threads, the right inserts, the right bolts, and all that kind of stuff. So when you're doing 3D printed stuff, a lot of times you'll have these. This is one of about 25 of these boxes that I have of different types of bolts. We're going to try to figure out how to get this together. So I think those socket heads go in here, so we need standoffs. And what size standoffs do we need? From my notes here, it was M3 by 10 six millimeter male to female brass threaded spacers. Okay, M3 by 10. So here's where it gets fun. These are some M3. I have many boxes of these. And uh, this is why I always have a little ruler next to my desk. I need to find which one is 10 millimeters. Is it this one? That's close enough. It's like 9.5 or something. So we'll, we'll call that 10. So it looks like we use these guys. So I'll need one, two, three, four. Put them into here. Do I have a bit for this? Just so I can cinch them down nicely. Is that the right bit? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so screw one. Let's see. If I put you in here, I put you in here. Is that correct? Oh, nope, that's right. Okay, so 10. And then I think we put this like this. So there's this little uh, this little gap here that kind of holds the holds the ports in nicely and gives it an index to go in hopefully if this actually works why are you not going on there we go okay and then we need m3 by 12 so this one actually has its labels whenever you buy these sets save the labels m3 by 12, 35 pieces. So this should be that. And then we'll need a different bit. Is it this one? Yes. Huh. Lucky. Okay. So let me put that in. Ooh, these, it doesn't feel so wonderful, but it is going in. That one's feeling a little bit better, but it's still pretty tight. I wonder if the uh, 3D print is just too tight around these things. I'll let you see what I'm doing. You still can't see much because this is black on black and it's uh, the lighting is not perfect here. I just threw my camera up on a monitor mount. <laughs> I clamped it on and uh, it's not the most stable platform in the world, but this is a level two Jeff video. So what you going to you get what you pay for here and you didn't pay anything to see this. So. You know what I just realized too, I didn't install a GPS module in here, so I'll need to take this all apart at some point and do that. But this is mostly just to see if the thing fits together, and that's it. And it definitely fits together. Okay, and then there's cutouts here, which I don't know if I, I don't know if I can pop those off or what. Let's see here. Does this come off? I think these are just. I think that's printed in. I think that's part of the model. Let me let me check on on the uh, actual 3D printed model here. Yeah, those are actually printed in, so they don't come off. But these are just. Now I got to fix the the bump there that I made. These are for little rubber bumpers, which I think I have some. I have my box of rubber feet, so let's see what size this is. That's a little bigger. Maybe it's these. The things that you do when you have hardware designs, you end up with hundreds if not thousands of all kinds of things. These are the clear ones. 
These black ones look like they'll fit perfectly, so let's go with these. Let's do one bumper. This is also part of the assembly process, like every step in here. You'll notice that if you buy a really cheap part, it usually comes with four of these cut out, but they're not installed on the device. That's because this is another assembly step, and every step of assembly costs more money. You need a larger production line for it, and uh, it takes more time. So when you're designing a product for production assembly, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of little steps that you take to determine the final price. <clears throat> because doing this might add 8 cents or 12 cents to the final cost, or more, depending on how annoying the process is for a production worker. If you have a machine that can stamp these things on, that's great. If you can design into the product itself bumpers <clears throat> or other mounting solutions, that's awesome too. Uh, but it looks like we put this together and it's sitting nicely on the desk. So there you have it. This is our Time Appliances Switchberry PTP Aware Sync E enabled switch, which I will be testing and I will show off how it works in a future video. This was just to see if this case puts it together and it does. That was the first time that anybody has integrated the hardware with the uh, case. Let's make sure that the micro SD card works in here too. I do see that there's a there's a little gap there. That might be my printing. That might just be a screw needs tightening. Not sure, but that's the only part of this case that I think is a little tiny bit off. Actually, maybe, eh, I don't know. These are the fun things when you're integrating stuff where it's like, okay, redesign that part, redesign this part. The best thing about building hardware is you learn all these little tricks like whether to put things uh, on a certain face or the, the amount of annoyance it is if you put a port somewhere else on a different face or where you lay out your ports like these uh, which have little bump outs on them, how you're going to put the case together so it doesn't flex or, or do weird stuff around those ports. There's, there's a hundred little things. And then on top of all that, you have the mechanical assembly portion, which these screws and the standoffs and stuff, that adds a little bit of time and, and labor. And then ventilation. So after you put this together, run it for a week, put it under load, and then is, is something inside going to overheat? Then you have to figure out, do I need another heat sink in there? Do I need to put more ventilation on the side or what? In this case, we have a few holes here and uh, these guys, which are on the bottom of the board. So that's not the best thing for heat, but in terms of the Raspberry Pi CM4, at least, that shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but yeah, level two, Jeff. Here's the Switchberry. I will be covering this more later at some point. And uh, depending on how I post this, that might be upside down. So here's the Switchberry, which would be right side up if I flipped the footage. But I don't know if I'll do that, so we'll see. Anyway, I'll see you later. Merry Christmas.